The four tissue types are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. Most of your epithelium is considered epithelium proper, which refers to the epithelium that lines the organs, the body cavities, and the inner and outer surfaces of the body. Epithelial tissue is named according to its layering, followed by the shape of the epithelial cells that make up that layer. The first name of epithelial tissue is either going to be simple or stratified. When the tissue is composed of only one epithelial cell layer, we refer to this tissue as being simple. When epithelial tissue is composed of two or more layers, we refer to it as stratified. The last name of our epithelial tissue tells us about the shape of the epithelial cells that make up that tissue. There are three principal shapes of epithelial cells, squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. For example, a single layer of squamous epithelium would be called simple squamous epithelium. A single layer of cuboidal epithelium would be called simple cuboidal epithelium. And a single layer of columnar epithelium would be simple columnar epithelium. When a tissue is made up of more than one squamous epithelial cell layer, it is called stratified squamous epithelium. Similarly, when we have more than one cell layer of cuboidal epithelial cells, this is called stratified cuboidal epithelium. And a tissue made up of more than one layer of columnar epithelial cells would be called stratified columnar epithelium. Simple squamous epithelium. Simple squamous epithelium is a tissue made up of short squashed cells with oval or ovoid shaped nuclei that are also flattened and squashed. On a practical exam, sometimes you will see simple squamous epithelium on a slide that looks like fried eggs. These cells are from a cheek swab. This slide is made by taking a toothpick and scraping the inside of the cheek and then placing it on a slide and staining it with hematoxylin and eosin. This creates one single layer of skin cells or simple squamous epithelium. We also have simple squamous epithelium that lines the Bowman's capsules in the kidneys. The alveoli of the lungs or alveolar sacs of the lungs are also surrounded by simple squamous epithelium. This thin single layered tissue allows for gas exchange between the blood and the lungs. We also have simple squamous epithelium lining the uterine tube. Stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium lines the inner and outer surfaces of the body. When this tissue lies on inner surfaces of the body or in orifices of the body, it is usually not keratinized. Keratinized epithelium is composed of numerous layers of dead squamous skin cells called corneocytes. Moist areas such as the oral cavity, the nasal cavity, the rectum, and the vagina don't need this added protection from desiccation or drying out. Therefore, they tend not to be keratinized. This slide shows the non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium of the tongue. The stratified squamous epithelium that lines the outer surfaces of the body are characterized by these dead skin cells that cover the surface of the skin and provide added protection. This so-called keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is composed of numerous layers of dead squamous skin cells called corneocytes. This tissue is found on the outer portions of the body. Simple cuboidal epithelium. Simple cuboidal epithelium lines the renal tubules of the kidneys and glands. The identifying features are that this has a cell shape that is relatively square, typically as high as they are wide. Of course, they don't form perfect squares inside of the body. Simple cuboidal epithelium is found in the renal tubules and glandular epithelial tissue. The best way to identify this type of tissue is to look at the nucleus. The nuclei will be relatively large and circular, 
and will be located in the relative center of these types of cells. Simple cuboidal epithelium is found in glands like the pancreas. It is also found in the gonads, covering the ovaries and lining the walls of seminiferous tubules in the testes. This tissue type is specialized for secretion and absorption. Secretion is the process by which substances are released into the surrounding environment, whereas absorption is absorbing or taking up substances from the surroundings or from the lumen. Stratified cuboidal epithelium is rare in the body. Stratified cuboidal epithelium forms the protective surfaces of some glands, such as sweat glands, mammary glands, and salivary glands. Here, we see stratified cuboidal epithelium lining the walls of the seminiferous tubules of the testes. This is where spermatozoa are first formed. Simple columnar epithelium. Simple columnar epithelium is specialized for secretion in the digestive tract. The identifying features of simple columnar epithelium are that the cell shape will be columnar or tall and rectangular. The nucleus is going to be oval and stretched out vertically. The nuclei will be located towards the basement membrane. Some of these tissues may also contain goblet cells, which are specialized to secrete mucus. Here, you can see that the nuclei are nicely lined in a row towards the basement membrane. Simple columnar epithelia are found in the stomach, the small intestines, the large intestine, the rectum, the fallopian tubes, the endometrium, and the respiratory bronchioles. Simple columnar epithelium is specially designed for secretion and absorption of substances from the lumen within areas that tend to get a lot of use. These cells are specially designed to withstand the wear and tear that comes from serving the busy digestive tract. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Sometimes you will see one single layer of columnar epithelium in which the nuclei are not nicely and neatly organized toward the basement membrane. Instead, the nuclei appear still stretched out vertically but will be at different levels within the cell. The cell shape is still column shaped or tall and rectangular. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium is found in the epididymis. Because the nuclei are at different levels in these types of cells, it gives them the appearance of being stratified, but this tissue is not stratified and instead is referred to as pseudostratified. Sometimes when you see pseudostratified columnar epithelium, it will be ciliated. We find ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium lining the respiratory tract. This type of tissue has column-shaped cells which are tall and rectangular along with cilia or hair-like projections at the apical surface. The nuclei of this tissue will be oval or stretched out vertically and the nuclei will be at different levels within the cells. In the trachea, we see ciliated pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Stratified columnar epithelium. Stratified columnar epithelium is a very rare tissue type. It is composed of column-shaped cells arranged in multiple layers. It is found in the conjunctiva, pharynx, anus, and male urethra. Transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium is found in tissues that stretch, such as the bladder. Here, we see a definite change in shape of cells as you continue toward the apical surface. Thank you for watching.